Kevin Chapman, ladies and gentlemen, uh, actor, comedian, mm-hmm. uh, complete mass hole, yeah. and and uh, you play Bob on my new favorite show. Kevin can f himself, and which is is just an amazing show for so many reasons. But I got to ask, and I threw mass hole in there because I just want to ask: Are you the only guy actually from Massachusetts on the show? Because it, t- it takes place in Worcester. Right. Yeah. No. I. I. I think I am. Uh. In. In. In a way that it. It came about to me. I'm sorry about that. The That's way okay. it came about to me was, uh, I was home during the pandemic, like everyone, locked down. Mm-hmm. And my agent called me and said, "Hey, you just got an offer to do this show." And I'm like, "I'm not going anywhere." And she said, "It was. It's right up the street." I was <laughs> like, "Okay, I'm in." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I wasn't really familiar with the material, and then. When I saw what they were doing, I, I was uh, I was pretty impressed. Um, you know, it's uh, it's a, uh, a show that goes you know from a conventional approach, single camera, and then it goes to a multi cam, and they and they kind of weave that in and out of the storyline, which is um, really kind of difficult. I've never done multi cam before, and for a lot of people, multi cam are those shows where. You know, they have laugh tracks and, mm-hmm. and um, you know, like King of Queens or uh, I'm trying to think of some other multi-cam shows. They have laugh tracks and they kind of tell you, suggest you when, you know, when to laugh and when not to. And, yeah. um, you know, and it almost got like a game show feel to yeah. it. Yeah, well, I'll so, tell you, when I first started watching it, I really, all I knew was this was filmed in Worcester. I live in Worcester. I got to right. watch this and see what, you know, see what it's all about. Cause, you know, you get that attitude where, oh, they better get the accent right or whatever. Right. And, um, and so it starts off, like, like you said, like this typical family sitcom, even the, the lighting and everything about it. And then all of a sudden, it switches to like, it looks like you're watching Ozark all of a sudden. Yeah. It gets mm-hmm. really dark, not only like visually. But the script gets dark, and uh, so you've. Ne- I was going to ask that. Have you heard about any other TV show doing something like this? And you kind of already answered. You said you never heard anything like that. Before. No, it's the first time I've, I've ever heard. At least I have. It, it, but you know, that's usually not my genre. That's not something that I, you know. Uh, I always, you know, I always told my agent I'm going to write a book called Cops and Gangsters because that's what I always get asked <laughs> to play, either right. a cop or a gangster. You know, right? <laughs> the Mystic River. I was one of the Savage Brothers. Right. And, uh, you know, and uh, Brotherhood on Showtime. I was Freddie Cork on mm-hmm. Person of Interest. I was Detective Fusco. It's always, you know, it's always uh, City on the Hill. I was Jay Amano. I'm always mm-hmm. a cop, you know, right. or the gangster. Well, you were. No, did you did you get to work directly with Shatner on Boston Legal? Uh, no, actually, I worked with um, okay. uh, who's the guy on Blacklist? James Spader. Um, James Spader. James Spader, right. yeah. yeah, who went to Andover Academy or Phillips Academy, went to Phillips Academy. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, okay. and um, I worked with him and Candace Bergen. They were, I played a, uh, a cop on, on the stand, uh, and they were my defense attorneys. Oh, okay. Well, you play Bob, and that's Kevin's father, and just to give people a little background, so you only really see you and, the, and Kevin, who plays uh, uh, Annie Murphy, Allison's husband, you only see really see you guys in that sitcom mode. You never see you guys in the uh, in the darker or Ozark mode, as I like to call it. And so, well, well not yet. Anyway, I mean, Andy oh. Murphy's great. She's uh, she, you know, they, there's a lot of talented people on this show that I've never, you know, I've, I've never like this is the kid Eric Peterson that plays Kevin is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's relatively um, kind of new. He did some work, I think, on Big Bang Theory. Um, you know, but mostly, like, guest stars and stuff, you know? Um, yeah. I've never seen him as, like, a series regular on something. And uh, I think he's phenomenal. Yeah, he's um, great. And uh, Mary uh, and, Mary Hollis, is it Imboden or Imboden, who plays Patty? Yes. Oh yeah, she's God. really good as well. Yeah. She's very, very talented. And, uh, and, and you know, just... The sweetest, uh, just the sweetest girl. She was, uh, she was knitting hats for everyone on the set. The super talented. I mean, the cast, the the cast itself is super talented. Yeah. Uh, Brian Howe, uh, who I've known for a long time, uh, is on there. He's great. I'm trying to think of who else. It really is that perfect, uh, that perfect mix of great writing and great acting. Right. You know, that, you know, not every show gets. And it's just, it's so, once, you know, once it starts switching back and forth between those formats, it makes that sitcom format with the laugh track 
just so cringy because then you know what's going through Allison's head. And so every time, mm. you know, like, you know, Kevin or you say something to her, you can tell it's just like, it's just like stabbing her in the gut. Yeah, yeah. Valerie Armstrong was the uh, creator of the show. Um, and it was, you know, kind of funny because she was like, you know, she was a writer on like SEAL Team and like <laughs> uh, 10 Days in the Valley, Master of Sex is where she kind of, uh, you know, cut her teeth as a writer's assistant, you know? Yeah. Um, and so to have this come out of her, it's, 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 uh, it's pretty wild because it's not, you know, it's not the, the genre in which, you know, she is relatively known for, you know? Now the story so, um, the story is about being set in Worcester is that it was like her roommate's boyfriend or something like that was from Worcester and she'd been here a couple of times like cuz she's not from here she's from like Connecticut. Right, right? exactly. Yeah. Yep. yep. So uh, you know it's funny I didn't I've never really didn't have a lot of experience with Worcester myself the only thing um you know, the only connection I had to Worcester was was Dennis Leary, who grew up in St. Peter's Parish in Worcester. Right. And his brother Kiwi, I think, works for a hospital there in Worcester still. Uh, who's a phenomenal guy. Um, but you know, I, you know, Dennis was the guy who started me off in the business. So, well, I've been living um, here. Uh, I've been living here twenty years, and the only thing before that, because I grew up in Natick, so the only thing I knew about Worcester was the Centrum, pretty right. much, or EM Lowe's. I just drove out here for concerts, you know, or maybe to buy weed every now and then. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, but now I've been living here for 20 years. It's a great city. So I'm glad yeah. that Worcester's getting represented, you know, in, a, in an interesting way. I wouldn't say it's the most positive way, but it's, it's, a really, it's a really interesting way. And what really gets me about this, and um, I and a lot of other people are critical about it all the time, is I really think the people who are not from Massachusetts really nail the accents. In, yeah, in they a, do. I mean, they, they really... Uh you know, they really put in the work. And, you know, there's nothing worse than a bad Boston accent. Yeah. That's just, it's like nails on a chalkboard, yeah. you know? It's infuriating. Um, it's funny. I was in Los Angeles. I lived in Los Angeles for um, almost 14 years. And then, you know, once my kids started going to school, my wife and I said, we're going home. Um, <laughs> so we've been back in Massachusetts now probably about 10 years. And it's funny when, you know, I get, I'll go to work on a show or something because, you know, I'm home, so my Boston accent is as thick as you can cut with a knife. You know? Right. <laughs> so people are always like wanting to talk to me, and I'm just like, I'm here to focus on my work. I'm not here to be your dialect coach. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you, did you do any kind of? Did you do any kind of coaching with uh, with the other cast members here? Did they bring no, somebody in? No, I didn't. Uh, uh, the only time I've ever uh, when I did Mystic River, you know. Sean, Sean Penn and Tim Robbins would always pull me aside and say, you know, and it's funny, Tim, Tim Robbins would, would give it to you phonetically, you know? <laughs> he would, like, spell it out. And finally I'd be like, Tim, I ain't got time for, like, you know, a spelling bee here. Just tell me what you want me to say. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to... That, uh, that was the only time. And it was funny because I was in Clint Eastwood's office on the Warner Brothers set, and somebody happened to call. Uh, I think it was Patty Duke was producing wow. a show or something and she called and she said who is the dialect coach for um for the show and and clint said well as a matter of fact he's sitting right here <laughs> 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 and then he said it was one of our actors that's that's awesome yeah you just gotta yeah. remember to put an a where there's an r and an r where there's an a well not only that too in the ing it's no it's not it's not going it's going yeah you know right and it's uh in the r is clipped and that's the thing people always, they, you know, they always think it's elongated R, right. and it's not. It's car, church, it's, it's a clipped R, you know. One, of the, one so. of the great little exchanges that kind of actually touches on that subject is when they're talking to Alexa. And he's going, Alexa, and she's like, well, you're saying it wrong. So you kind of address that kind of accent thing mm. in the show, which, which right. I think is awesome. And then, can you, can you check me on this? Is that the All in the Family set? You guys are working on? No, 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 no. It's Dude. a set. It, actually, they shoot that. Uh, the set is in Brockton. And the, it's on a soundstage. Oh, the living room is? Yeah. Yep. They did Because yeah. I'm telling you, it looks just like the All in the Family set. Yeah, Ex the production designer may have, you know, may have copied it off of that. And I shouldn't say copied it off that, but used that as, as kind of his muse for his design of the set or her that design right. of the set. To be truthfully honest with you, I don't even know who the production designer is on the show. Actually, I shouldn't. You just go in there and do your lines, 
right? And just get <laughs> yeah, the, you go get and the hit your marks, out. you know, you see the lines. I mean, you know, it's funny. People think that, um, you know, the biggest misconception is that, you know, people think you're, like, you're there for every day, every, you know, every scene. It's like, you know, there's so many moving parts yeah. uh, on, on a series that you're... Um, you know, it's funny when I was doing pers- I did person of interest for five years uh, as Detective Fusco, and my wife was a huge fan of the show, and she would say to me, "What's happening here?" And I'm like, "I have no idea. Like, I wasn't there." <laughs> right, right. Well, it's it really is my new favorite show. It's it's just I was as I said attracted to it because I live in Worcester. I wanted to see what they what they would get right, and there's a lot of Worcester references in it, but the show itself is so different. And and it's done in such an interesting way, and the point of view in it, and um, it's fantastic. So, and it's good to see you in it too. Good to see an actual Massachusetts guy, you know, in a in a show about Massachusetts, kind of about Massachusetts. Yeah. Thank you. I hope it. Uh, I hope it has a long run. Yeah, and then I was reading that you are in this movie called Coda. Is yeah. That, so that's so that, coming out in August. Is yeah, that it comes right? out in August on. Um, on Apple TV, that was the largest acquisition yeah. in the history of the of the Sundance Film Festival. And it looks like an, an amazing movie. It's such an interesting concept. It's really cool. So you know what CODA stands for is a child of a deaf adult. Yeah, and uh, and just, you know really the the kind of two second version is uh, it's a story of this family. They're they're a fishing family up in Gloucester. And everyone in the family is deaf, with the exception of this one girl. But they're an extremely close family. And she develops an interest. I shouldn't say an interest. She develops a, a, a talent for singing. And, in, and it's the only thing that her family, who she's very close with, can't participate in. Right. Oh, my because God. Because they can't, you know, because they're all deaf. Yeah. So it's really, really cool. And, it, and it's uh, it's a great cast. And um, and. Uh, Sean, uh, who is the director, uh, is from Cambridge. Oh, okay. Sean Hader is her name. She's, okay. I mean, incredibly talented. I got to be truthfully honest with you. It was one of those things where, when I was shooting it, uh, I was honestly like in my head, I'm saying, I don't know if this is going to work, and it just goes to show you how much I don't know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it uh, sounds amazing. It, it was. Uh, yeah, I mean, when I was in the thick of it, it was it was a very um, it was a very different experience because we were working with um, actors who were you know who, who were hearing impaired. So you know, you I don't of course I don't I don't sign. So you really we're trying to figure out when you're supposed to come in with your line, and it was a really uh, it was kind of challenging for wow. me. But I tell you, incredibly talented, great you know, the film come out phenomenal. Uh, and hats off to Sean Hader. She's uh, she's an incredible talent. I'm just really urging everyone to check out Kevin Kniff himself because I think it's such a brilliant show. There's nothing. F- it's funny. It uses formulas, but it's there's nothing formula about it, which is pretty amazing. So, uh, Kevin Chapman, thank you very much for uh, for checking in, man, and good luck. Thanks, Michael.